Hello there guys and gals, the Welsh Hunter here back with yet another 100% achievement of trophy guide and this time we are getting it all in Chance of Senna. Now this was developed by Rundisk, published by Focus Entertainment and is usually available for a price of £15.74 slash $19.99 but has just released on Xbox Game Pass at the very least. So again, get it while you're getting good. So this, uh, basically, this is kind of like um, a sort of puzzle game. It's based around languages. So there's like five different chapters uh, with five different like sets of people. Um, and yeah, so effectively what we have to do is unveil a mystery by solving the language puzzles. And yeah, going from there, it's very, very decent. It's, a f it's generally a fantastic game. Very enjoyable and looks absolutely stunning as well. So it can't be beat. So as for achievements and trophies, um, obviously we, you know, for the majority, there's quite a few story related ones. Um, a few easily sort of mis miscellaneous ones as well. We have to uh, do all the game's glyphs, uh, reach the galleries, activate all the terminals of which there are only 10 in the game. We also have to do the First ending first, the bad ending, before we do the true ending. And there's a whole bunch of achievements tied to the true ending. So, all in all, you're only probably looking at around three hours or so to get this done. So, with that being said then, let's do it! And in terms of dialogue and everything, um, a lot of dialogue choices don't actually matter through the game when we speak to people. Um, you can't skip any cutscenes, not that there are many of the cutscenes. Uh, yeah, so it's quite, um, to be honest, you can see already how pretty damn gorgeous the game is. So here we go then, let's go with the left stick, whoa, 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 have a little uh, twirly dance there. It's a guy in a hood, so effectively you can either press the A button or the cross button or just walk up the stairs, up to you. So it's obviously, it's going to be a very linear path for the time being, but this is a guy who runs like he's 98 and he's running in his last ever marathon which uh, is still impressive but still I don't know why he doesn't take the hood off mate it's bloody boiling right so head up anyway as we come into this area and this is where the game is gonna obviously it's gonna be a bit of a tutorial for the next sort of 10-15 uh, minutes or so so you, every time you see like these these are the glyphs that we need to translate so uh, anytime you see different or new ones, if you press the Y button, that'll bring up the page and it'll actually put the glyphs, uh, it'll tell you that it's already there. So later on, we will be able to translate said glyphs. So just pull the lever and it's going to be a case of every, basically in every room that we go into, we're going to be interacting with a lot of items. Um, in order to get all glyphs on the page. So here's another one. Uh, in fact, that's actually uh, not part of the glyphs. You can always tell when you've got a new one is when uh, it's at the top of the page. It'll tell you to press the Y button to say that you've got a few different ones. You can press the right bumper as well if you want to uh, toggle things. But basically what we're going to do is from left to right, we're going to press lever 1, first of all. And then we're going to press lever 3. And then we're going to press lever 4. And finally, we're going to press lever 6. And that is what will get the water unflowing. Look at that, mega. I mean, you could have literally just jumped across or, you know, got a bit wet. Because it looks sunny enough to get dried. But there we go. So, this is the first bit. So, he, your character here, whatever his name is, old hood bags, he will always do this. He will always um, automatically, when you've got enough glyphs or whatever, he'll automatically... Um, open up his journal, so you just have to put the correct glyphs uh, next to the correct uh, thing. So if you just follow along here, now I'm not going to be explaining what every glyph looks like. Uh, obviously, if you've done it correct, this will happen, and we're going to get our first achievement here for spiriting the glyphs. Fill in the journal's first page. So yeah, it, trust me, as we just go and go right across the bridge, it's going to be a lot easier rather than me going. Oh, put the one that looks like a butt cake. Or, oh, put the one that looks like an orange pimple in this section. I'll, I'll just, uh, you just got to follow along with that bit. It's going to be a lot easier. Okay, so now we've got other random persons who are like, Hey, bruh. Mm. 
Oh, sorry, no, he doesn't say hey, Brad, does he? He says, Mee. Uh So again, as you can see there, because we've got new glyphs, the Y button prompt appeared at the top of the page. That gave us uh, four new ones. So interact with the lever. Again, this is a bit of a puzzle where we have to get both of our bro skis across skis. They, they don't go very fast, though, in case you were wondering. If you could tell. Okay, so head up to the next bit. Speak to him again. And as you can see there, because we now know, because uh, we've uh, translated a few of the glyphs, we know now that he's saying, open the door. So instead of him being Hodor from Game of Thrones, the hold the door is going to be Odor. Odor. Odor! <laughs> no, never mind. Okay, so off he pops again. Uh, Odor. <laughs> so here we go again then. And like I said, he's going to automatically open the journal uh, every time, so you won't actually miss anything. So just pop these three in, and that's the next part done. So then we can continue up the stairs. Let's get out of this beautiful section. So interact with the lever. We're going to have to be doing a bit of back and forth uh, at the minute. So we'll get our uh, broski across right here. And again, you can press the Y button again. We've got a couple more glyphs. Well, one, but hey, it all adds up for the win. So he's going to nip across. And then we can just do the same. So pull the lever again, and then we can cross. Oh. You, me... And Dupree. Uh, so interact with the next lever here. And that's going to get some more water popping down. Well, popping down our side. So cross the deserted Moses River once again. Interact with the next lever. And of course interact with the next lever now we are still gonna have to get our big broski across and that's as simple as um, we're obviously not getting across here just yet so what we need to do is go back to the second no the first lever here sorry to interact with this first lever it's gonna get this bit going and all dried out and then we're going to go up once again interact with this um, next lever just by the door or sort of just close to the other side there and then quite lovingly what that will do uh, we can then head back I know it, it, this game is generally quite a bit back and forth here, as we'll see in the next set of chapters uh, head down and interact with this and that is what will complete this section so head across to the other side and then we're out and about So welcome to the outside everyone, uh, looks good huh? So like I said, remember we're going to be interacting with a lot of things. Uh, so the first we're going to interact with here, we get a couple of new uh, glyphs just from this uh, the marking on the wall. Head to the right, there's going to be another two that we're going to interact with here. Here is the first one. And that'll be that for the time being. So again, continuing head to, to the right, here's another one we're going to interact with. Another two or three actually by here. So like I said, you know, a couple of, uh, a couple of things we'll interact with, but we'll already know the glyph, so it's always worth being on the safe side. And again, as I said, 
Uh, as I'll say for the last time, he will automatically open up his journal every time that we've got enough or we've seen enough things. So you've just got to put these symbols in. Again, obviously pause the video. Um, and uh, it'll probably be a lot, lot easier rather than trying to follow. So sorry, big bit quick. Uh, but that's all good. So up we head once we've done that bit. And then what we'll do now, we're going to head straight across to the right. And we're going to head down. We're basically going to find our first terminal out of 10 here. And this is where terminal 1 out of 10 is. And you don't actually have to do anything. You've just got to interact with it. And uh, you can have a look to the right, which will be a conversation whole thing we have to do once we've got all of the glyphs later on. And this is basically just a tower of doors that we're going to need to link all the terminals to get to the true ending. So, uh, once we've done that, head up. And then we are going to speak to Broski right here, just to see if he's got any new glyphs for us, which he has. And head up the side of steps, and then what you're going to do is effectively speak to everyone here. So, speak to all five or six people, and that should get you all glyphs needed in this particular section. Again, some will, some won't, so it's always worth just talking to everyone. <sighs> So this is the devotees language, but we're actually going to start the warriors one as well. So once you open it up here uh, by pressing the Y button, press the right trigger, and you'll see that we've got a couple of the warrior glyph languages, which we will be getting in the next level. Oh! Right, so once your conversation is done, head back down. And by the way, just in case you're wondering, you can just press the B button if you don't want to speak to anyone. Um, if you're in dialogue with anyone. So head into this area here. We're going to get another missable achievement now. Uh, all we're going to be doing is... So interact with the sort of glyph at the top of the building right there. And that'll get us another one. And then what we're going to do then is ring the Abbey Bell three times in order to get that achievement. Basically for being an absolute pain in the old cucumber bundersnatch. Guys are like, hey, screw you guys. I'm very sorry, but it's the stuff we've got to do for achievements, ho. Yo, I meant to say yo, sorry. Uh, so head down, and we're going to come to this area. It's going to be a little bit of a cutscene. <laughs> Where some weird, creepy kid was just stalking us, so that's nice. Uh, don't worry about those little balls of light or whatever they are. They're just um, completed stuffs, so we don't have to worry about them. So go ahead, follow the kid, uh, which means going back to the left. And then up. And here he is, just hiding behind this vase. Hey, hey. Hey, You, me, and Dipri. Okay, so follow him again. So head to the left and down the steps again. And a lot of these areas are going to be familiar because we're going to be walking back, forth, and all around them. Uh, so just continue here. He's There he is on the left, just by the water fountain, and he's going to weigh hay us again. And apparently he's also going to go, <laughs> which is probably a, uh, just a new crappy TikTok viral thing, isn't it? Hey, look at me, I'm on TikTok. Heh, <laughs> uh, Yeah. Anyway, so follow him once again. So we're going back up the steps. <laughs> and this time we are going to the right. So yes, the right, uh, immediately to the right. And then we're going to head down these sets of steps right here.
So I do hope that I go sort of slow enough uh, when you're following the symbols to so you can actually keep up lovely. Uh, so follow where El Kidness went, which is going to be just, um, again, literally we could have just moved that pot ourselves rather than playing a game of hide and seek. But, you know, we like to keep uh, keep people entertained, don't we? Keep the kids entertained. Uh, so there's another glyph thing right there. So basically there are quite a few of these sort of stealth sections in the game. Um, if you do get caught, you basically end up dying, but you will always start from the same area. Um, so this is basically the art of distraction. So what we're going to do is follow the kid. We're going to pick up a stone, throw it at the bell. The bell should automatically be highlighted. So all you got to do is press the A button. And then as you can see with the kid, as soon as the guard's off over to the right, then we can nip off. Um, now, what you'll do, you'll automatically go against the wall, but you can press the B button to can. You'll still be crouching, but if you press the B button, you will get off the wall and you can basically free move. So, press the A button again uh, to pick up a stone or some kind of thing. Press the A button again. And wait until the guard goes over to the right. So, again, if you press the B button, you will come off of the wall. But if you don't, you'll just, um, you can actually press the A button again to go where the sort of shadow, white shadows were, uh, in order to, uh, get into that position. So, yep, as easy as that for now. And we've got a couple more glyphs to glyphen out. So, head to the left, interact with the, um, shelf of tools and many, many things. And the only thing that we are going to be robbing is a key, which comes in handy. Who left the bloody key on the tool, the shelf of many things again? <laughs> so once the kid has he 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 uh, follow him up, press the A button to interact with the door, and it's job done. Basically, every time you see a puzzle icon, as long as you've got the correct thing, well, obviously it'll work. So as you can see there, we got the welcome to the tower, we are fun and games. Uh, don't worry about these four, they, they're just uh, chilling out, uh, doing their own thing for now. So we're going to head straight to the right, come into this area, go down the steps. And if we head to the right again, uh, we can interact with this uh, big statue thing here. I do believe we've already got the glyphs, so we should be good, yep. But again, like I said, it is always worth checking uh, everything that I do or everything that you can because it can be quite easy to miss one. Head up the right side of steps and we've basically just got this puzzle to do. It's one of those where we've got to move these sacks of stuff in order to get the ladder all the way to the right. So just follow carefully with what I do and you should have no problemo.
Yeah, damn dear, boys. That's how it's done. So again, that was uh, just a case of it would probably be easier for you to follow rather than me trying to explain which one and which position to go into. Uh, would have been just a lot of unnecessary noise, really, from my voice. Anyway, we've got uh, we've got a uh, coin with lots of good stuff on it, plus a cheeky glyph to go on there. So we've got another one. Um, obviously, you can see which ones we still need to fill up. Not uh, fill up like Phil Schofield, because that guy is a dirty old N to the O to the NCE. Um, so interact with the shopkeeper. And again, we're going to get another couple. Oh, I'm sorry, Philip Schofield. <laughs> Maybe you shouldn't have tried to do some 15-year-old boys. Huh? Okay, head back down the steps. And speak to this guy again. It's going to be another couple of glyphs we can get. And interact with the um, sign just above the door. So once you're done, head back up the steps, go to the left and interact with this sign. That's going to be another one. Looks like C8 or a sideways smiley face. Then head back up the steps, head to the left. And continue on up these steps and just head to the left. We are now done with this area. Oh, wait, we're going to the right, sorry. Um, so right and then up. That's my bad. My mega apologies again. So interact with Broski here for another glyph. So that's another couple done and dusted, just like McFly and Busted. So head to the left and go up the steps. We are now going to go uh, interact with the statue right here. And just interact with all three. Um, in fact, you don't actually have to interact with every single one. Um, once you've seen one, uh, they'll all pop up. So we've only got one left to grab now, which is nice. So head to the sort of top left uh, here. Here we go. Up the steps again. There's a lot of walking, by the way. Um, interact with this broski and you're going to give him the coin. The coin where Dovity's devotees see God. And he's going to be like, ah, bruh, thanks, bruh. Oh, actually, again, if you can hear him, he's going, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. So I, I, I guess that means thanks. So just interact uh, here with the left-hand side. It's basically just a little puzzle. Now, you need to hold down the um, A button and... Uh, move it so with uh, God which is the third one we're gonna put that all the way to the top warrior we're gonna put that third and then with the one on the right hand side the devotee we're putting that second so it's basically three one four two once that's in in we go and again we're gonna nope oh, actually just trying to have a interact with the sign there uh, the sign just at the top of the door, but I don't actually think it's the one that we need, which it is not. So, ne bother, me old fanny bags. Okay, so uh, head up the steps, and what we're going to do once again is just, we're going to ignore these dudes and then speak to these three just after we interact with this thing at the back right here. Um, not that it's going to give us another glyph or anything, but, you know, always worth a shot. So just interact with these three dudes after you've done the next part of the journal. And that'll seem to do it, pig. So let's get out of here.
in just a minute because uh, we've got a couple of broskies uh, taking a little walk around. Here they come. Run! I mean, I don't think it makes too much of a difference wherever they are, but uh, yeah, they just go for a walk around. So go ahead and speak to the guy, the homeless bro that you gave a coin to. And he's going to give us um, um, a piece of paper with some stuff on it. So spank in your hairy crutch. That's much appreciado. So head to the right and go through the little archway. Obviously, up the steps, we're going to speak to this dude right here. So, go ahead and head down. And when we get to the statue, you don't have to actually have to interact with the statue here. It's the same one from earlier, God Yumi. That was his god's name, Yumi. Um, head down, and this area should look familiar as we head down once again. And go to the right, and we're going to interact with the stripey sort of pot right here. And there we go. And what do we get for all our troubles? It's another key. I tell you what, somebody's going to be in big trouble leaving these keys about. Just for, you know, the hidden center here to find. Uh, so anyway, go back up, head to the right again. We're going to interact with the door. And interact with the key, of course. Press the A button there a couple of times. Get yourselves in. In like a bin. Uh, so interact with the sign there on the uh, sort of left. And then interact with the table on the right. And this is what will actually get us the last bit of glyphness. And then press the A button anyway in order to pick up the next puzzle piece of item piecenesses. So basically what you'll see in terms of some puzzles is you'll get a clue in your journal um, about how to solve the puzzle. Um, again, if they don't make too much sense, just follow exactly what I do and you'll be fine. Because it made not a lot of sense to me, but that's because my brain is, is just imploded now. It's, there's nothing there. Right, so once we've filled in that part of the journal, let's head to the left. Again, hopefully I'm going sort of slow enough for you so that you can keep up and um, in terms of uh, marking out the glyphs in the journal. Uh, so we're heading to the left, back to this area, go straight to the bottom left effectively again. And if we keep going left, we're going to find a little entrance here, a little uh, kind of side entrance. Well, it is a side entrance because this is where the second out of ten terminals are. Righty mo! Once we've hit that terminal, head out, head to the left, and again, continue up the stairs. Oh, look, we're in coming into some newish places now. So, uh, just fill this part of the journal out again, match the glyphs. Okay, so once we have done that, we can now carry on. Now, the reason I am doing this, so we basically still have to interact with a lot of items, especially in new areas. Even though we've got all the glyphs, um, we need to interact with them in order for our uh, Aiton Senna, the chance of Senna, Aiton Senna, yeah, you get it. Um, but basically, he will only interact with the journal once you've seen or looked at enough stuff. So because we've seen a, a few things now in the cemetery, he will do the next part of the journal. Um, 
and it's obviously going to be the last part, so we will complete the devotees language. But yeah, so even though we may have all glyphs, we will still keep interacting with a lot of things, even though it may seem pointless. It's actually for a good reason, so uh, our Aiton Senna right here can whack out his journal and we can smash this boy out. Okay, so what you're gonna do head to the left. We're gonna interact with this statue once twice three times and Four times until the key is basically looking at us head to the right and now interact with this statue We're gonna interact with him twice. I believe no just the once sorry uh, Go up to the top right and we're gonna interact with this statue once twice and that's it and then Whoa, sorry, head over to the left and interact with this statue. I believe it's four or five times basically until he is looking uh, Towards us well until the cutscene begins and we're all good. So now this area is done We can head down the stairs and ta -da! Okay, so once we've got the torch going, we're going to head up. We're actually going to be grabbing the, the next terminal in just a bit. So, a uh, bit of a confusing way, so let's do it. Let's do it. So, head to the right. Up. Then we're going to go to the right again. And then up again. And then up again. And this is where the preacher's corpse is. This is, um, uh, again, uh, an achievement you can miss. So, just interact with it, and this will get us the preacher's fate. That's probably because he was with uh, Philip Schofield. Uh, sorry, sorry. Enough of that now. So head back anyway. Head to the left again. Uh, no, sorry. Head up. Sorry. Almost uh, made a mistake there. Uh, left and then up again. Eventually, come here and get through the door. And we can go to the right. And this is where the lever is. So it's not too confusing, but obviously it can be very confusing if you get lost and everything looks the same. So head down. To the right, to the down, to the down, and finally to the left, and finally more to the down. Oh, nice. Right, head left, down the steps. The Trudy door, or Trudy archway. And we've reached the second level, so we will get the Great Escape achievement for uh, reaching the frontier. Um, now, this is an area with quite a few more stealth sections until we get a warrior's disguise. So again, just follow the left, uh, the sort of linear path nipping off. And like I said, because it's a new level, we've got a whole bunch of new glyphs that we're going to need to find. So, um, so there will be a couple. So if you interact with the sign there at the top of the door, that's another two that we're going to grab. There's obviously quite a bit more in this level. Um, and we're actually going to be coming up to Terminal 3 right now. I think I said it at the end of the last chapter, which I was wrong about, so sorry about that. So head all the way to the right, go through the open uh, sort of doorway right here, and Terminal 3 will be right in. Yeah. Ah, that'll do, Ping, that'll do. So, this time we're going to interact with the uh, gong. 
Oh, oh, sorry, it's not a gong, it's a shield. It looked like a gong just now. But turns out that I'm the gong because it's not a gong. I'm just a dong and it ain't no gong. Right, so from here then, what we're going to do is, well, do the next part of the glyph. Uh, so basically it does say that it could be linked, well, you know, you just, you, you can basically do it whenever, but uh, yeah. Save some confusion, just do it whenever it pops up for us. Right, so interact with the uh, gongish dongish once again. This time we're going to pick up the spear uh, at the bottom of it. So well, there we go. Make sure to grab that one. Ooh. Yeah, look at us now looking all warrior-ish. So then we're going to head up the stairway this time rather than to the left. Uh, just head to the right. And then interact with this broken pillar. So then we can climb up. So once all that is done and you've uh, translated another couple of glyphs, head to the right and then continue on up through the doorway and then just continue heading all the way down into the next doorway. So somehow there's no guards here which works out well in our favour in all fairness. Uh, so interact with the statue there, the base statue, we've got another glyph that you can press the Y button on if you so wish. Uh, then interact with the doorway after interacting with the flag. And then what you need to do then is get onto the hamster wheel. Uh, that's going to pop up this big old weight. And then you need to go and, uh, when you get off, interact with the lever at the bottom. And once that's turned, we're going to do the same thing. So back on the hamster wheel and then interact with the lever. You might actually get away with just interacting with the lever, but I'm not quite sure. There we go, so another couple of glyphs translatiadoed. So once that is done, and we've got the uh, statue pointing in this direction, head towards it, interact with the... In fact, no, don't interact with anything. We're just heading to left towards the door, so down the steps and to the left. That's where we're heading. And this is the first out of a few stealth sections in this area. 
So the two guards are going to be always walking around, so you just have to time it correctly. You can get seen and still make it to the left without them catching you. So once the guard disappears up there, just wait. And we need to wait for the guard on the left to start heading towards us. Again, if it's easier, just press the B button and then make a run for it. One of the guards, they may see you, they may not. Um, but again, if it's yellow, it's fine. So again, quickly crouch over to the wall. You may get spotted straight away. And again, if you get caught, you'll just start from this section anyway. So what we're going to do then is we need to wait until the guards uh, march in or over to the left. So we can, we can then go over to the left as well. And now for this bit, because this guard's looking at us, what we need to do is go as soon as the marching guards are in front of the two guards staring down at us. So as soon as you're in that position, make sure to go and you should not get seen. So just wait until again, the marching guards are off over to the left. And once they are, give the gong a little hit. The two guards are going to be popping over. So as soon as they uh, get out of your field of view, you can actually just press the A button to go up and look around. And then that bit is all good. And then when they're coming back, we can then go ahead and just wait until they are there. There we go, until they're back. And they're going to be like... Bleh. So again, just wait for the marching guards to head down. Then we can nip down and we should be free to go to head down the steps to the left. Now, this part isn't actually a stealth section, although it looks like it. Uh, we're just effectively waiting for the scene uh, to play out. Oh. So once you've done all that, uh, you press the Y button on all the glyphs and everything, wait until the guards sort of nip down, and then we should be fine to hit the lever and go. And somehow, nobody's going to notice the uh, elevator lift coming down, so we can just head through the doorway. Uh, more stealth section coming up. So, you know, don't think you're all high and mighty as the 98-year-old marathon runner continues to jog. So head to the right. Now, there's going to be a guard uh, one is going to be guarding and the other one is going to be walking over to the right So you just need to stay a little bit of a ways away behind him Obviously, you don't want to get right in his field of view because that's not going to go well So as soon as he nips off over to the right hide behind this pillar and then what we're going to do We are we are going to need to pick up that box So as soon as the guard picks his box up and goes past the pillar that we're at grab the box and then immediately so press B to cancel and then immediately pick up the box Head down and to the left. Again, you may get caught. I did get caught in this section. Uh, but you'll just start from the beginning of this area, so it's not bad. But immediately just head to the left. Go ahead and whack that boy on the elevator, or on the lift, sorry, it's not an elevator really, it's uh, it's a lift. So, you know, better say it right, because people will be all fuming and stuff with me and leave me horrible uh, comments again. <laughs>
So there we go. We interact with the lever. The lift is going to be up. And what that does is actually just gives us a, a little bit of an area we can hide behind so the guard doesn't catch us. So heading up the steps... Obviously, just wait for the guard until he starts going back to the right, then go on to the lift. And then as soon as the guard starts going to the left, head up the steps. Right, this next area seems complicated and massive, but it's really not so bad. Uh, so what we're going to do then is just quickly run into the sort of middle of this area. And then you can, again, just continue running... Well, in fact, we're going to go to the left where the guard is pushing. We're going to stay a little bit behind him. Because we can't get through in the middle area. And then we're going to take a right. And there is a guard walking about, so just be careful. But then head to the right again, so we're into this middle area. Now, there is a guard that is watching. So, as you can see, a bit of an edit, because I messed up. But there's a guard that's staring straight down, and he will catch us. So what you need to do is wait until the guard of the box is in front of him and then move straight away. Pick up the item. And then again, we'll just have to wait until the next guard with the boxes is in front of the guard so we can make a break for it. Right, so we just picked up a stone. Here comes the guard. So what we need to do then is press the A button as soon as the guard with the boxes is in front of the guard at the top so the guard by there can uh, get out the way. So as soon as he's done that, quickly make a break for it. And you should just get away with it there. And finally, we've just got one more guard to uh, get past. So once the guard there, the, the uh, sort of right-hand side is walking to the left, head to the pillar, and then just wait until he's walking to the left again in order to get up the steps. So... Finally, welcome to the armory. This is where we are going to basically get free reign of stuff now. So we interact with the shelf at the back. And we can now put on a helmet, grab a sword. Uh, I think you can grab whatever it is that you want. But I ended up just going with the big uh, eye erection helmet and one of the chunky old swords. Makes, it makes you seem as manly as ever, doesn't it? They always say the bigger the weapon, the smaller your weapon. Yeah. Probably. I don't know. So, anyway, once we've done that, we now have free reign. So, interact with the uh, the flag, sort of sign flag there to the left of the armory. And then, now, again, try not to get too close to guards, because they can still sniff you out if you get too close, and you will die. So, obviously, just, you know, still keep your distance. So where we're going to go now is basically to the left-hand side of the screen where the guard is standing, and up we go. And again, rather a bit quiet in this little area. But that's the way, uh-huh, uh-huh, we like it. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. uh, So once you've uh, listened to all that, there's actually nothing to... I don't think there's any glyphs, any new ones to, to grab. So we can go straight through the doorway again after we do the glyph bit. Right, so just go ahead and follow the uh, room all the way around. So follow the steps down. Don't go through the upper door just yet. We're going to head all the way down. Over to the left here and just interact with the big sword statue thing. That's going to get us another cheeky glyphon. The old glyphs of Dover, as it were. And then we can head to the right. There's another, again, that one's quite uh, the, the tricky one to find, actually. Very easily missed that one there, just by the statue, by the uh, archway. And then head over to the right-hand side. All 
Right, so here we are then, back where we were, sort of at the beginning-ish of the chapter. Uh, but of course, this time we don't have to uh, sneak around. But again, try not to get too close to the guard, because as you'll see, he'll be like, Hey, you smell ferny. Yeah, sorry, sorry about that. But anyway, grab a bottle here from the left-hand side. May seem pointless now, a nice bottle of wine, but it'll come in handy. So where we're going to go now is effectively to the left, and then back up the lift. Right, with this monkey bit done, we're going to head down these steps. And come into a area that we haven't before, so this time we're going to go to the left. You can you can go ahead and speak to the guard if you want. Um, in fact, we will speak to the guard anyway, because we're going to need him for... Um, obviously another glyph. <laughs> Welcome to an unmanned room, which of course would never normally happen in real life. So, uh, interact with the table anyway. It's going to get us another couple of glyphs, the old glyphs of Dover. Yeah, if somebody got a big massive telescope like this, they're going to have at least a Professor Farnsworth from Future Armour in here, aren't they? Um, so, we don't actually have the puzzle piece to complete this yet. The bottle does not fit on the telescope. As you can see, it's the star shape, which we will be grabbing in just a bit. Interact with the uh, table on the bottom. And it's actually a whole bunch of nothing, so don't worry about that. So, uh, now we know what to do, where to go. We are now going to head back down the steps. And then we're going to go upwards once more. So then we're going to be in this area once again with the big giant sword statue. Uh, take the left side steps down, doesn't really matter, but we're going to head up this time. So all the way up through the next doorway. Right, so once we're into this area then, we're going to interact with uh, all of the statues here. Uh, one or two, I think, may have a new glyph for us. Well, kiss my griots. I was right. Uh, so once you uh, cannot get past the broskies on the left, we're going to head to the right, and then the next opening, we're going to go to the up. So another nicely unmanned area for us. So what we're going to do then, uh, interact with the sign... Again, there's no glyph for us, but we are now going to uh, pop the bottle. Uh, you can have a look in if you so wish. That's where we need to get to. And the way to do that is put the bottle on the bench. So we're going to need to put the bottle on the bench. And you think, wow, how randomly weird. Well, it's all part of the... Uh, it's all part of the... It's all part of the... Um, now, I thought we needed another bottle to put on the bench, but we actually don't. So 
what we'll do is head to the right. Eventually, there we go. Uh, just head to the right and interact with this little console -y thing right here. Now, what we're going to do in just a minute, so what we'll do is go down the steps. We're going to go back up, and you would have heard like a bottle moving or something. And with that one, the door is now opened. So we'll head inside and interact with the only thing we can here, which is the table. Looks like there was a drunk on the roof. There he is, look. Absolute steam bags on the roof. So, uh, head to the right and go down. And then from here, we are going to go to the right again. And continue to follow the steps all the way down, because we're going to head all the way down the next doorway. Yes, it's a lot of running. Again, not bad for a 112-year-old marathon runner who's pretty much on his last knees right now. I only say that because he genuinely runs like an old person who's crapped his pants. Uh, so again, heading down and interacting, uh, or just going straight down, sorry, heading to the left. Again, I try to interact with the flags and everything that we go past. Uh, just to be on the safe side, but you need to put your sword down, and there's a reason we're going to do that now. Um, so, what we're going to do is actually get in the warrior's bit. So, just continue, and again, all you got to do then is take orders. Uh, so, you literally just wait in. He's going to tell us to get a bottle, and then he's going to tell us to put it on the cart, and then we're going to push the cart, and then we are free sailing. Nice and easy. And we're going to head to the left and go through the doorway. And nobody's going to question it why we didn't get straight back into the old uh, Guardi Marchi bit. So just continue going to the right and just interact with all the glyphs and everything that we come across. Uh, yes, we do actually get a new glyph there as well. Uh, so head down the steps. Yeah. 
Jeebus blood, did nobody think to just build an elevator instead of about a thousand steps in this place? Anyway, uh, grab the torch here from the left hand side. Uh, it's a little puzzle we're going to be doing. Uh, it's not too bad though, so head to the right. We're coming up to another terminal as well, so heading up. Uh, we need to put our torch down in the middle square. Head through the gap. Up the top right there. And here is the next terminal. Okay, so, uh, once we're out of there then, go to the left and up these little steps, and we need to turn this, I believe, four times. Basically, uh, two, three, and four, and yes it is. Uh, so it basically gives us a little bit of a lift. So, back up the steps we go. And then, as you can see, the um, sort of lift that was looking the other way is now, well, it's looking this way. To interact with the lever, that will open the doors straight in front of us, and that is another little area we can nip on through to. So yes, of course, make sure you interacted with the um, big wait sign thing on the left. That'll get you another journal page, Tingy Majiggy, going. And another one here as well. Wow. Right then, so there's a specific item that we need to grab. Again, no guards here, so it just makes light work of all this. So head into the hamster wheel then. That is going to put the weight all the way to the top, so you're going to need to keep hitting the A button until it's at the top. There we go, blood. That's a bang. Teddy, that is nice. Right, so interact with the lever on the side of this thing, and we're going to put it over to the fourth. Or the, I mean, from left to right, it's technically the second one. So once you've put it over to the second set of shelves, we're going to head up to the, uh, the uh, second from top one. There we go, and that is the one that we're doing right there. And that is the piece that we need to put into the telescope, microscope, whichever scope it is. Right, so nip it off over to the left here, interact with the um, big mental thing. That's going to give us another... Another glyph or two, and then we've only got one left to find now, because you are so damn cute. So with that one, take a left, head over the tiny little bridge so you don't fall into the uh, black current squash, and head up the lift. Right, so we're 
automatically going to grab our sword again, you know, just to keep the ruse going, the disguise. And then just head straight past the guards on your left uh, and straight up the steps. Right, so head up we do, and then, so, so basically what we're going to do, we're going to put this little mirror thing down, and then we're going to interact with the front of the telescope, microscope, whatever scope this is, and all it is, is actually just four symbols. Now these four symbols, um, obviously what you'd need to do, uh, this is basically the clue for the next puzzle, and we'd be able to, you know, go from there, but it, if you need it anyway, it's in your little journal, old old I Rexioni head. So anyway, head back down and all the way back down again. Like I said, it's kind of a lot of back and forth in this game. So after you've sweated it all out and you are back to this area here with the uh, couple of things. Uh, so what you're going to need to do then is just put these into a certain spot. So with the first one, we'll put it in the second slot. The second one up the fourth. Third, we'll put at the very top. The fourth one, we will put in the third slot. And then the last one, the fifth one, we'll put at the very top as well. So... So that's how we do that one. So you press the lever, you press the lever on the right hand side. That'll get this ding dong, the witch is dead, witch old witch, the wicked witch song going. And we're actually going to be doing a missable achievement with this one as well now. So again, once you've done that, then we uh, just go ahead and follow where, uh, basically just follow where I go. And uh, yeah. So obviously all the guards are rushing around, so you don't have to worry about a ting. So just follow along, and we're going to go back to the armory. So this is where we're going to get the miscellaneously missable achievement. We basically just have to change our helmet. Um, so just go ahead, nip to the back, and grab one of the smaller, shorter helmets. Again, size doesn't matter, so uh, never ever worry about that. Um, but once you've changed the helmet, at least just the helmet, nip back out, and that is where we'll get the fashion victim achievement. So again, that's for leaving the armory with the wrong disguise. Um, but again, we can only get that after we do the Bing Bong, The Witch is Dead song. 
and hopefully you'll grab this otherwise you'll have to replay a new game so let's uh well let's go for another jog shall we So yeah, when we've gone through a couple of places a couple of times, I won't bother telling you up and down and all around, so uh, hopefully it'll be easy enough to follow. But basically, here on the left, now the guards have disappeared, so we can actually go in for the first time, uh, get a couple of journaling going, and then this is where we're going to find our last glyph spot. And with that all done and all brown bread, we can go ahead, get the lever going, and we can start chapter three into the garden of the man of the unknown. Or simply just the garden for short. So here we are then, on the outside, and it does look mighty nice out here, doesn't it? So, uh, head off to the right first. Again, we'll have to get a bunch, whole bunch of glyphs going again, remember? So we'll interact with this sign, press the right trigger there to nip over a couple of times. There we go. Oh, it's a good start there. So we get five going. So, with that done, that we can then go ahead and, well, let's do this first bit of journal, and then we'll head up the steps. And, oh, look at that. Luckily, there's a nice boat for us there, chilling, waiting, and concentrating without the baiting of the fish in the uh, uh, Pea River, is what it looks like. Genuinely looks like everyone just uses this as a wee wasting ground. Okay. Mm. You can already smell the toxic burns. So, uh, right, once we get to the other side then. Uh, go ahead and speak to these two, oh. Larials. Oh. Then we're just going to go ahead, cross over the little bridge. Again, you're trying not to get urine on your shoes um, or on your whole body, which would be nice. Uh, go down oh. and speak to this Larial. That's for another glyph of life. Or another couple of glyphs of life, as it were. And then just press the B button to back out, as always. And get another couple of these going. Okay, so from here, uh, what we'll do is basically sort of go back on ourselves, but go up and to the right, or sort of to the left, sort of just past the bridge, so we're going left, sorry, and then up the steps, 
speaking to this lad yeah, and then continuing on upwards up the steps. <laughs> Ooh, it's a great looking mask. Um, so go ahead and speak to everyone in this mask section, Rap Meow. Yeah, in fact, no, they're all good. They're, they're too busy being entertained. So interact with all three statues for another few glyphs. And uh, just nip past the old comedic mask-headed dude and uh, head to the left. And if you interact with the tree there, you'll get what looks like... I ain't even going to say it, but apparently it's a banana. So just let's just stick with that. It's a banana. So once we head left into this garden area, again, what we'll do is we're going to head around. We're going to interact with the next tree to grab what looks like a banana. Kind of looks more like chilies and some other stuff. Um, and then we'll just go ahead and speak to these two. Alright, so once we've done another bit of journal paging, head down the steps there, and down again, and there's going to be another tree where we're going to get another what looks like a banana. And there's good reasons, by the way, why we're grabbing three of these what looks like a banana. So head up to the right, and you're going to interact with this monkey, and just press A twice on him to give him one of the what looks like a banana. I suppose it's not going to be a banana. What? I... Whatever bloody kind of fruit that is. Anyway, it's pink, but it's raw. So just wait until all of the three broskies come up, and then once they start sort of heading down, we can just back out then. There we go. So now, once they're down, we can just back out. So now we're going to find the next monkey cart. So if we basically go up and around to the left, here is the second one. So again, just give the monkey the... <laughs> we'll just keep calling it what looks like a banana. with this one continue heading down and this uh, there he is this time so they're all in the same general area which is always slicey nicey Right, so once all the journaly journaled has been journaled, uh, let's go to the right. And then we can gonna go down the steps this time. And basically all we have to do here then, we've just got to wait now until the lady that is walking around with, uh, looks like a nice big jug of water. She's not actually pouring anything in, but that's fine. So just wait until she comes down. And then as soon as the door's open, follow her in, follow her in. But not nothing like that, bruh. Okay, so apparently since it's as easy as that, we'll get in, we'll head down the steps to the left. And we're going to go through this first doorway up to find the next terminal. And remember to just interact with the table next to it as well. Okay. 
So this is just a bit of an easy puzzle. Um, literally all the picture is is two handshakes, uh, two two hands shaking. So the big piece there just put on the left, and it's kind of easy to figure out from here. So we know what it is, but is anybody getting any uh, strong Dylan, you son of a bitch vibes from this? Because I did. Anyway, with that done, get a bit of journal scrapping going. Dylan, you son of a beast. Okay, so with that done, head to the right, to the left, and shake it all about. Uh, just go ahead, interact with the little window in here. We get, uh, we get to see someone working on something, and that's where we need to go. And just after that, we got another couple of journals to glyph out. So before heading up then, uh, head all the way to the left, first of all, and then head up, uh, or down, sorry, through this doorway, and just interact with the glyph just over onto the left-hand side. And that'll be just another one there for us. So head back out, and then to the right slightly over the bridge, and then up the steps this time, and we're back into the lovely new garden area. Keep it very nice and tidy and meow. Right, so heading all the way up, go ahead and speak to a couple of broskies, mia or girl skis. Uh, go ahead and choose the bottom option. Um, I don't know if it makes too much of a difference. I think choosing anything gets you um, uh, gets you that little scene. Sorry, that's what I was trying to say there. But we actually need to go back down in just a bit and grab that. So head left up the steps for now, and then straight through into, well, after we interact with the sign, to get another couple of glyphs, we are then going to interact and go into said little building. And then once we're in said little building, uh, first of all, we're going to interact with the sign here on the right hand side, and it's going to get us another couple of things, there we go, another couple of glyphs going. And then we will do some more journaling. Actually doing this will get us the Scholar Achievement for validating half of the game's glyphs. So that's working out well. So head back outside, speak to the guy working on, I, I believe it's our boat, although I can't remember parking up here. Uh, but basically he needs a hammer, so that's fine. We'll head back in to the building on the left and uh, go up to find where the hammer is. Sort of go up, it's on the left-hand side of the room, but it's up. If you're looking at it from this camera angle, it's it's weird. But anyway, head back out, give him the hammer, and uh, that's hammer time done, baby. Hey
네. 인투 디스 에리어 어게인 앤드 원스 위브 인터랙트 위드 더 사인 주스 앳더 톱 오브 더 도어 이츠 고비 에잇 어너더 원던 헤드 투더 라이트 인터랙트 위드 더 사인 앤드 더 레프트 앤 인터랙트 위드 디스 사인 어즈 웰 주스 인 케이스 앤 이츠 오즈 웨스 두잉 but 헤드 투더 라이트 올더 웨이 트루 디 도어 나우 어게인 이츠 리틀 비트 오브 어 메이즈 so 위브 앳더 헤드 다운 앤 데인 헤드 투더 레프트 And then from here, we're going to head to the up. Head to the uppers. And then, now I do, I, I am checking the signs, but uh, we're all pretty much good. So obviously just head straight down. And then this time we are actually going to head straight down the steps. Uh, but I just decided to check out the sign there, but otherwise head straight down. Yep, straight down. And then, of course, we're just going to be going to the right. And then we're going to be going to the uppers. And this time we're going to be going straight down. So not to the right down the steps, but straight down. And this is the area that we have been in. So go ahead, open up the uh, gate by interacting with the lever. And then go back, head to the left before going through the door. And interact with the urine-soaked heck hole. Pee-pee stained. Water. Ugh, you can already smell your hands now, can't you? But anyway, that gives us a compass. And this is going to be... This is going to come in handy to do um, quite the slightly annoying puzzle in just a little bit. Okay, so we're not totally going to unmaze ourselves. Uh, we're going to just go to a new area. So we're going left, of course. Down the steps, of course. And left, of course. And then up, of course. Got, got a bit Americanized there. I don't know what happened there. This time we're going to head left. So through the sign, which we got earlier, but not through the actual door. And then we're going left. So continue going leftwards. Jedward leftwards. And there's going to be two things here. This uh, Right next to this purple door, we're going to grab another couple of glyphs. Now, this purple door we're not going to be able to access until uh, the very end of the game in order to get the true ending. So uh, don't even panic yourselves about it just yet. Okay, so with that one done, let's head back to the right. 
And we'll be going back up. And we'll be going back up. And we'll be going straight back up. A lot of uppers. And we're going to the right. No up this time, just right. And we're going to be heading all the way to the right. And we're going to be heading all the way to the up this time. And here we are then, out of the maze and into the good stuff. Okay, so now we're going basically right and up this time. We're going to be getting a, an achievement in just a little bit for completing and winning both garden games. They're very easy, so don't worry about that. Don't uh, We interact with the statue there. Um, and you can speak to these guys if you want, but I didn't bother. There's actually no point. So if you go ahead and speak to the Ladia right now, there's two games that we're going to do. Um, one is just like a whack-a-mole thing. So the first one is effectively like a, a whack-a-mole game. And you've got to be quick. And with the controls, they can be a pain. But you've got to hit the purple one. And the purple one only. So if any of them have got yellow, don't hit them. Make sure to just be hitting the purple mask one only. Uh, you can get punished very heavily as well. Uh, if you hit one of the yellow ones, the slider goes down by quite a bit. It's quite unfair, actually. And she gives us a very nice, delicious comedy coin or something. Uh, so, right, Spanky Harry Crutch. Right, now go over to the left one. This is the Flappy Bird. Luckily, it's not like the Flappy Bird achievement in Goat Simulator, which, of course, was just a mega pain. Uh, but just hold the A button and um, obviously get through the columns without dying. Uh, but again, this one is not too difficult. Definitely not as difficult as we've been used to. Thank God that was not as frustrating as the Goat Simulator one. And that'll get us the true Geform Threer achievement. So head to the right anyway and up these set of steps. And again, what we're going to do, we're going to uh, just interact with this part again. Um, again, it's more for just the journal later on. And then go ahead and speak to the three Brahoskis. Oh. And they very nicely open up the door for us on the right. So, thank you very much. Oh, and in fact, actually, because we've got to be going to get something for them. Uh, so, all we've got to do then, again, obviously, just avoid that so you don't get crushed into one cheeky, chunky little smithereen. So, obviously, it's as easy as we're just platforming. We're just uh, make sure your white shadow's there and just jump across when the gap is available. And do that until we get to the very end. Now just head around, all the way around, and we can interact with the statue in order to get the fire puzzle emblem, or whatever it is called. And then just simply head to the right, and we'll have a little scene with the three Brahoskis.
Brass, why are you laughing at me? I saved your day. Anyway, with that done, head to the left and left again to go all the way back down to this sort of main area. Uh, this time we are going to continue straight going left. I mean, continue going straight left. That's what I was trying to say, sorry. And this time we're going to go up the left set of stairs this time on the screen. And a bit of journal smashing as well for the win. All right then, so continue heading left. We're gonna speak to the uh, twins. Oh, Jesus, okay, the drunk twins. That's why the water's yellow, I get it now. So anyway, go ahead, speak to the comedy bro and give him the comedy coin, or whatever it is. Uh, that's gonna enable us to get through into the left. Or into the theater, of course. My ride! God damn it, now we gotta walk all the way up the steps. Do it with no sweat and no aplomb. But do it with vengeance. I'm just joking, no vengeance. Okay, head to the left in through the door and you're gonna have to interact with the curtain and enjoy the whole show. Uh, but basically, enjoying this whole show will give us a lot of clues what we're gonna do to get through the big puzzle area. Oh! Oh. 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 Wow, thank you. That was hilarious. That was about as hilarious as Amy Schumer. Uh, so, go up and interact with this book. Anyway, it's going to give us the final... Yes, the final glyph of the area. So now we don't have to look for any more, which is always nice. Get a bit of journaling going. And that be the bard language all complete. So head down the steps lovingly and knowingly that we've done all good. And to the right of us is the next terminal. Oh. Hmm. 
And then with that one done, we're going to be heading upwards this time. Up upwards to go down the steps. Interact with the lever. That's going to open up the gate for us lovingly. So thank you. And then just head to the left again. And interact with the next lever in this room, just to the left here. That's going to open up the doors for us. The big double doors, so head through them. And, oh, we just end up underneath. Ah! Well, that would have come in handy instead of uh, doing those two games earlier on. But it got us an achievement, I suppose, didn't it? So, anyway, uh, continue heading back down towards the right. And then head upwards. This time we're going to head left. We haven't been left just yet, so let's head there right now. Uh, go ahead and just continue all the way up. Lovely bit of garden once again. Head to the left through the open sort of doorway. And then we can um, just pop in the fire emblem thing, whatever you want to be calling it. That's going to open up the way for us. And then we're going to head in. And this is where we actually need to interact with Compass and the whole... Um, comedy show type thing. And this can be uh, a little bit tricky. Uh, it, it took a while for me to sort of get used to it. But basically, what you're going to see here is a saw. So you open up your inventory or your journal. You go to the saw he found west he went. Right, so we know we need to go west. But when you open up your compass, the red part indicates north. So the red always indicates the north. So once you pop the red bit up to north, you then need to go wherever it is that is west. So for me, it was to the left. Um, but it may not always be the same depending on where your characters come from. So once you've seen the instrument, then you'll go uh, into the next, into your journal, the instrument he found, north he went. So again, get your compass out. And again, like I said, the north is always, uh, the red is always going to be North. So pop the red bit on the north, and we know that I've got to go down. And then it's going to be the same for this next bit then. There's five of these that we've got to do. Uh, if you get it wrong, you just end up going to the beginning. So the fire he found, east he went. So again, like I said, compass, the red part will always indicate north. So you've just got to sort of um, pop it north and then figure out wherever... Uh, east is and then go that way and then just do it for the remaining two so hopefully I sort of explain that okay enough um, so that you can get it it did take me a few tries in all fairness And once we've done, we are complete. We have done the garden area. Now we're into the darkness, the galleries. We get a couple of monsters in this area. Ooh. But yes, so in terms of that last puzzle, it, it wasn't just a case of going left, right, up or down. Depending on where your characters come from, it can't... It, the, the directions are the same every time, but depending on where the character comes from, um, it can be different. So, a uh, bit of a scene here, but don't worry, these monsters, just like in most games, they're scared of the light. <laughs> Wieners! So, knowing that knowledge is safe, uh, we've got a couple of puzzles to do. So, head to the left down the steps, interact with the lever. That's going to open up this part, so we get a nice bit of light. Watch now, we'll just tease him now. Maha! <laughs> Loser! 
You wanna go again, bro? Come on, fight me. Come on. Fight me! <laughs> okay, let's not uh, tease him too much. Uh, don't poke the bear because he will chew your hand off. Or, you know, if you're a woman, would you rather be with a man in the woods or a bear in the woods? Oh, that's divided people, hasn't it? Right, so we do have to be a bit stealthy in this area. So again, just wait until the monsters turn around. And then you should be able to nip it up while he's walking over to the right here. And once he starts walking to the left, go behind the next stone. Now you may, if you were quick enough, you may have had enough time there to press the B button to cancel. And then go up and release the lever. But uh, let's just take our time for just a second. No point in rushing, because that means deathin. So once he starts coming up, make sure you've uh, picked up one of the stones. As soon as he turns around, press the A button to throw it. And then quickly use the lever. And then immediately run over to the right. Just so you don't get, you know, smashed up in the face and stuff. So interact with the lever on the right. And that's going to come in handy for us. And we can head over to the right hand side. Now continue going all the way to the right. And then what you're going to see is a monster coming towards us. So quickly move the cart over to the right. And then quickly interact with the lever behind it. <laughs> oh, that was pretty lucky. Okay, so going into the right hand side. No monster is going to appear here, so don't worry. So continue heading straight upwards. And we're going to interact with the next terminal here on the left. And if we have a look at the uh, big uh, picture here. Uh, so this bit's fine. But then what we need to do is actually interact with the minecart itself. In order to push that to the right or over to the left, whichever way it is. I uh, forget which way. Um, but basically there's going to be some new glyphs behind there. Oh, there you go. So once he pushes out of the way, interact with the big poster, the big picture, whatever it is again. And you get a couple more glyphs. Right, so with that one done, let's head back down. And we can interact with the little, uh, kind of looks like a washing machine from afar, but uh, it's just one of these consoles. A uh, couple more glyphs, because there's a lot in this area that we need to do. So uh, what we need to do then is, again, you'll have to hold the A button while you do this. So pop the lever up first. And you've got to do it in this specific order. God damn it, why won't my lever go up? Stay up, damn it. And then push the number one button there. Um, the first of the four buttons. Then the, the gold dial will turn that all the way to the right. Then click the third button. And then click the next dial all the way to the right. And then that's going to get the lift working. God, look at us being electroconocutionists. And we're out of the disgusting dark monster depths for the time being, which is always nice. So, heading up to the left. 
and we'll interact with this big poster signage for another glyph or three, four, five, six, seven, basically a lot. So once you've interacted with that, that's a lot of new glyphs for us, which again, will come in mega nicely handiness. Head up these steps to the right and go ahead and interact with this broski for another glyph or two. And simply head down to the left and go through the left hand side door. Okay, so here what we're going to do is we are going to interact with the sign at the top of the door. I uh, don't think it gives us another glyph though, but it doesn't. That's fine. Uh, so nip past this minecart here. And we're just going to interact with the sign before we head up to the right. So again, go to the right hand side through the gates. And you're going to do once again a lot of walking. No elevators in this place. Why? So welcome to the library. We've got no fun and games. We just got peace and quiet and learning stuff in our brains. Right, so you interact with the first thing here on the table for a, another glyph of life. And if we head up, we're going to interact with, again, we're going to interact with most things in this library section. So this is the first bit. Again, like I said, it might not give us any glyphs, but it gives us uh, some story progression in terms of uh, translating those glyphs. We interact with this uh, piece of paper on the wall. It's going to be another one that'll pop through for us. Yeah. Mm. Okay, there we go. Eventually got there. Sorry. Uh, so, on to the left. Once again, I just interact with this part. And then go ahead and speak to this guy. He's going to give us another glyph. Okay, thank you. Now we interact with the table here on the left. This is going to uh, give us another piece of Glyphononius. Ooh, a lot's already done, huh? Well, we are basically almost an hour away from finishing the end of the game, so, you know, we're getting there. It's heading up these steps to the right to go on the upstairs of the library, interact with the table uh, to the uppers for some more Glyphoroonies. And then we'll head to the left. There's going to be another piece of paper for us to interact with just on the pillar. Same one as downstairs, but, you know, it's all good. Then interact with the dudeski broski here on the left. Me find plural? No, you find plural. I'm not doing any work for you. Anyway, interact with the big, beautiful looking thing. Mosaic. Plu uh, um, not urinal, not plural. Mural, that's what I was trying to say. And once the next journal page is complage, we'll head down, interact with this thing, which is going to be a mug. Nice. Looks good. And then this time we're going to head down the steps, which is just in the top left corner there, and interact with the next thing in here. It looks like a rock, which is, uh, and that's one famous, there's one damn famous rock. Still. That famous rock, which does nothing, is probably a better singer than, you know, 70% of most pop stars today.
And again, that is the reason we've been uh, looking at all of these, uh, so we can get the journal going. So there is method to my madness after all. Do so interact with the table there and then interact with the thing on the ground. Um, it's basically just, uh, again, we're just going to interact with everything to get some journal bashing going. And again, this will be the next clue for the next puzzle. So head down the steps and find the next terminal. Get away, diseased rat pigeons. Okay, so head down to the left for another scene of scenes. Okay, it's not very much scenes, it's just you exiting the door on the left. So head to the right, and we're going down through this gap into what looks like a train station. Interact with the what looks like a train station board. I mean, it's obviously not, but it does, does look like. And then we're actually just going to go ahead, head to the right. Interact with the uh, Dudeski Broski on the right. Okay, and then from here, what we'll do is we're going to go into the uh, down to the right hand side and up through this little doorway here. And on this part, we're going to come back to in just a bit, but we've got a few more things to do first. Um, so go ahead and actually speak to these guys. And once that's done, uh, just head downwards and continue all the way down again and through the doorway. And this is a nice little area, isn't it? So, first things first, have a look at the device here on the left. Now, what you need to do in order to get all the glyphs to appear, um, you're going to need to go ahead and, with the top left button, just flick through all of the glyphs. So just, uh, you can see it's at number one there, and then number two, so just go through them all, and that'll get you another sort of five glyphs or so. There we go, and plus there's another couple of glyphs that we can grab here. So just on the right-hand side, if you interact with the chalkboard as well, make sure to interact with that chalkboard there, that's gonna get you another couple of glyphs as well. So, yeah, so make sure to interact with that chalkboard before we move on to the right. And then interact with the writing on the wall. Oh, fire equals monster scared. Ha, huh, well, I already figured that out. Thanks for your goddamn help. Right, so once we've done that, we're going to head to the left for the time being. And again, left down the steps. And we're going to speak to uh, these broskies and interact with the big massive picture sign thing. Okay, off to the left we go, down the steps we mow, mow, mow. Right, so interact with the uh, corner signs, and then head to the left. Again, we'll interact with this one, and then down the stairs, eventually, where we going? Where we go, man? Oh, there we go. Okay, so back into this little area with another lift. So we're going to actually take that lift up this time. And head to the right back down the old stepperonies, pepperonies up through the door. 
And this time then, what we're going to do here is we are going to simply wait until it gets to 4 o'clock and then we can actually get into the canteen area. Yeah, bro! Dinner time! Come and get it! Come and get it! Lovely. Right, so we're going to do a bit more journaling. So, uh, unfortunately, we ain't gonna eat, so just head past all the hungry bros and interact with the knives and forks here on the left-hand side to get, more specifically, a knife and fork, or a fork and knife. Uh, so once you've grabbed the fork and knife, uh, head through to the left here, and again, this is a nice bit of puzzle that we're gonna do, uh, but first we're gonna head down the steps, and continue heading down. So now we can actually finally, after we've uh, moved a couple of things and done a couple of things, we can actually interact with this lever where it says not to go because, you know, it's full of fallen rocks and stuff like that. And that's exactly where we're going to go because, you know, we fear no death. But uh, women, oh, women scare the crap out of me. So, just like earlier on then, this is just a timing, timed puzzle, so we'll just interact with this little sign here for another glyph of life, and we've only got three left to grab now, so we're getting close, getting closer and closer. But again, uh, it's just literally a case of, as soon as the rocks stop falling, you're going to start running. Zebra? Told you it's not so bad, Zebra. Okay, so interact with the machine here on the left, or whatever it is, whatever it is. And what you need to do then is you actually, again, need, you can't just push the blue button, so you go to the thing on the left. Um, that'll get, uh, turn it around, that'll get it going. You can't put the knife and fork in there, because, you know, it's not where it goes. Put, uh, you got to keep pumping this one, so uh, just keep pumping until the dial in the middle is all the way to the right hand side like so and then you can be able to push now the purple button and that'll get us what we are wanting as soon as it cools off anyway
So, we get a silver ingot. I think they're called ingots. Uh, but head into the room on the right here. Uh, go anywhere. We're going to grab a gold ingot. I'm sure it, they are called ingots, aren't they? Yeah, anyway. Head down. And into this next area, we are going to be grabbing a copper one, or a silver one. Have a look at in the third locker right here. It'll always be in the third locker. And then go ahead and pick up the two key cards. Because, of course, we're going to need these to get to new locations. New, sassy, beautiful, vibrant locations. Such as More Factory. So just head to the left, pop in the first key card and nip yourself through. And here we are, back into the carting area. So head left down the steps. And this time, for the first time, we're going to head left down the next set of steps. Ooh, exciting. And the only reason we didn't come here before, of course, is because we didn't have the key cards. But now we do, Jack Crack. So get yourself in the door. Let's have a look. Is it going to be something exciting? Are we going to die? No, we're just in the silver mine. Uh, which is all good. So go ahead, pull the cart out slightly, and then just to the left in the pile of rubble is going to be the silver mining ingot. And by silver ingot, I actually mean it's not that at all. It's a tool that we're going to use uh, as we head down to the right set of steps into this next area in order to grab another terminal. Um, but it's, yeah, a tool we're going to use to get the silver ingot. My apologies. But anyway, here is the next terminal anyway. Huh? Oh. Damn, son, we're already on to 9 out of 10. God damn. Anyway, interact with the uh, writing on the wall here to get another three, and that will be all three. Uh, that'll be all the glyphs complete. So we're just going to do a little bit of translating now and in a bit in order to finish with this boy. So once that's done, head to the left, and we're basically going to go back out into the main carting area. Because we don't need no alibi. We don't need nothing in that silver mine anymore, so we've got everything we can, so we're going to head to the right and back up the steps. And then to the right continually. And then up the steps to the right, again. And nip yourself to the right. More writing rights. Okay, so here we are then in this next room is where we're actually going to get the torch. So, interact with the torch, which is just on the table in between the door. Um, we're going to pop this one open. And that is going to help us. It's uh, Yeah, it's just a lighter. Yeah, it's a, a tool, lighter, tool. Same thing. Anyway, do the journal, and then we're going to head through the door going up, which we haven't been through just yet. So we've got an easy little bit of a puzzle coming up now, and you just have to uh, put it in a specific order, or click the buttons in a specific order. So first of all, click number five. There's number five, and then top left, which is zero. And then middle left, which is three. 
and then bottom right, which is nine. So five, zero, three, nine. And then you'll have to do the final bit of journal entry stuffs, and then we will get that one complete. All the glyphs done in this level too. So there we go, Brett. That one is done. So now we can actually head Trudy Doors once again. Hello, Miss Door. Is your name first name Trudy? Uh, so we'll interact with the uh, sort of shelves or the chalkboard shelves, chalkboard at the back. And this is just another clue for a puzzle that we're going to be doing in just a hot second. So we can get out of there. I thought there's going to be more monsters in there, but I'm glad there wasn't. Because monsters make you poop yourself, slightly. Right, so just keep on following the old where I go for the time being. Now you have to do exactly specifically what I do here. So uh, you can go ahead, click the silver, um, just pop the silver one in first. You've only got two, so that'll be fine. And then pop the gold one in. So this bit's fine, it's the next part. We have to do in specific orders in order to get the right key shape in order for us to do this. Okay, so over to the next one. So what we need to do is click the first button, which is going to be the... Oh no, in fact we're going for gold first. So click the second button, which is gold. Now with the weights, we're going to put uh, all five down, all five of the bottom ones down. And then at the top, we're going to put the fourth one down. And then go ahead and push the purple button. That will get the first part done. So now click the silver button. So we need to make it silver, so go ahead and just put all the weights back. Only this time, we're going to do it like this. So at the top, we're going to do the second weight. So obviously left to right is, you know, first or whatever. So second, and then third weight. And then on the top shelf again, it's going to be the uh, sort of second of the bigger weights. And then on the bottom shelf, it's the penultimate one. And then the third one on the bottom shelf, and the second one as well. And then press the button again. That's going to get us a nice bit of silver. And then finally, we're going to go for carbon. So make sure to click the last button on the right, the carbon one. Pop all the weights back and then put these weights down again in a specific order. So first of all, it's going to be first from the top one. And then from the uh, top row again, it's going to be the fifth one. And then out of the four big ones, just put the first and second and third and fourth. So basically put everything apart from three little ones and then push the button. And then that should be the correct key shape. So go ahead and pick that up. Now, if you've got it wrong for whatever particular reason, the uh, next door just won't open. So that's, uh, that, that's when you know if you've got it right or wrong. So once you do have this key, we're going to head over to the left and interact with the door. And this is basically going to end chapter four. And we're up to chapter five.
So this should get you the one last step achievement, uh, basically for reaching the exile, which is going to be the fifth chapter. So yeah, we are effectively almost done with the first ending, which is of course going to be the bad ending. Um, so you interact with this big su giant sign poster thing right here. Now luckily for us, we are going to get through these glyphs a lot quicker than we have done in previous chapters, because they've got a nice little machine to help us out. So once that's done, we're going to head upwards through this door. And then take a left. And we're going to interact with a couple of these uh, VR-looking broskies. So the first one that we speak to will normally have a glyph or two, three, four going for us. Uh, we'll interact with the one on the left-hand side here, but he won't actually do anything before heading to the left through the door. So these are the machines I'm on about then, the big yellow ones right here, which is going to help us uh, basically smash through these glyphs a lot quicker. So as you can see then, it's one of those puzzles where all you've got to do is just move the certain rings to put it in a certain position, and it's as good as golden. So first of all, we're going to grab on the very outer ring, the what looks like an X. We're going to move that all the way down to the bottom, like so. And then we are going to move the torque option, and we're going to put that at the very top in the next ring. And then the next ring down, we're going to move this one over to the left slightly, and that is how we complete that one. And yes, so it'll automatically do it and it's all good. So heading down uh, over the bridge into the next area. And just on our left, we've got another one of these that we're going to crack on. Oh, no, it's the terminal, sorry. No, there's the final terminal. So if you have been following along, this will have been your Cable Guy achievement for getting all 10 out of 10 terminals. Um, but again, for the true ending, we will be coming back to these. So... There we go, so hopefully you've got that achievement, and then we can blink it off to the right, where we can interact with the uh, left guy here and the right-hand side guy as well. Okay, so now we're actually going to go back to the left, so apologies about this, we don't need to come back to this area just yet, this is effectively the beginning. Uh, so we're going to head back to the left, and all the way down the steps, and this time we're going to continue on going to the left, where we will find another one of these big old bright yelly machines. <laughs> Okay then, so for the first one, we on the outer ring, we're going to grab what looks like a sort of upside down L, or looks like a 1 or something. And we're going to pop that right in the sort of top left corner. And then the next one, we are going to... Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, there we go. So if we grab it from the top, we're going to put it just to the sort of bottom left hand corner, so it looks like this. And then we're going to grab the death icon and pop that down once. And then that should be done. That's another whole bunch that we're going to be slapping out. Right, so this time we're going to go up the stairs on the left and continue over the bridge.
Now, why do all big towers have just one big massive staircase and everything to grip over? Why can't they just, just have a lift? Just give me a lift. I don't want to walk all the way, damn it. Anyway, so first of all, on this big yellow machine, grab the no entry sign and put it up to the top. Then grab the next sign in the outer ring, put it to the left once. And then we're going to grab, just grab this not symbol um, in the last ring. And we're going to pop that over to the top. So it looks like that. So there we go. So we've only got one more of these machines left to slap it out. So let's head back down on ourselves and go right across the bridge again. So this time we're going to go right and go across this path where you're going to see a whole bunch of dudes and VR stuff going on playing games, but continue on to the right. And we are going to interact with the beeping keycard ting. So, like this puzzle, and a lot of the puzzles during the rest of the game, you actually have to find the correct symbol to match the correct thing. So, for instance, obviously, we need to find the key symbol, which is in the second row at the very bottom, first of all. So you need to get the symbol which says key on it. Next up, we're looking for the open uh, open symbol, which is the third one on the right hand side in the fourth in the fourth row, and finally door, which is at the bottom of the third row. So key, open door, and again, like I said, that's a puzzle that we're going to be doing prof proficiently from now until the end of the game. So just continue heading inwards, and we're going to speak to our Mister Moski. Oh. So this is how we're going to actually finish all the symbols now. So we just basically have to put um, the specific symbols in the specific correct locations. Uh, should be very easy enough to follow. Hopefully you can follow along. Hopefully I'm doing this slowly enough, but we got three of these to do. So once the last one is done, we will get the finally get the champion, uh, the champion, the champol, the champolion achievement for validating all the glyphs in the game. Hurrah!
So we now have a golden key, which comes in mega handy. And we're actually just going to be going now for the bad ending, first of all. Now, you have to make sure to get this bad ending first before going through all and linking up all the terminals to get the true ending. Otherwise, you will have to replay a whole game. So, again, for now, just follow exactly where I'm going in order to get to, um, effectively, the end. Now, our pal did say, you know, don't go up just yet. You know, you got some things to do, but no, we've got to get a bad ending and achievement out of the way. So this is literally just a case of running all the way until we get to the top. Again, an elevator or a lift would have been a lot handier right now. Okay, so all we got to do then is just interact now with the pedestal straight in front of us. Um, and that's effectively going to end the game. We, we will then get the I did it achievement. And then we're going to have to spend probably another 30 to 40 minutes just rebuilding um, at least uh, six terminal links. And there he goes, sitting all alone, ending this game and this playthrough. So we'll just go back to play. We'll go back to continue, load game. And we're going to start at the end. But of course, we're not going to go to the end. We're actually going to head all the way back down now. So here we go then, now we've got to rebuild all the links in the terminal. Now doing all of these will change things in the tower, so we can get uh, different miscellaneous achievements. So what we're going to do first, we're going to go down the tower one, so we're going to go to tower nine. So we can actually just nip through in there, and then what we'll do is interact with the tower again. Now what you have to do for this next part is basically, it's kind of like a conversation between the two of them. So what you need to find is the specific glyphs that go over um, and obviously match them up and everything so instead of me you watching me what I'm doing I'm just going to put all of the correct um, all of the correct words up on the screen for about 15 to 20 seconds so here it is then so what you got to do then is just pause it for now and then just follow everything along here and then once you've done that so obviously it'll be music warrior pillar of love that's what you got to find and then you've got to do fortress bard go 
etc etc so um, once you've done that and everything's complete you will get the first link rebuilt and an achievement to go with it so and obviously as it said there's something changed in the tower so once you've done that head to the left and this time we're going to go to tower uh, eight so which was one down and just off to the right and then again you're going to be doing the same thing so go over and again like i said i've put the solution on screen and it's just going to be a lot easier for you to follow Righto, kids, once that is done, something else has changed in the tower. Uh, we'll get to all the changes in the tower in just a bit. So this time then, let's scroll back over to the left. And we are going to uh, just go one down. And we're going to the next tower, which was tower six, I believe. Whatever it is. Anyway, it's this one here. So the one looking up, looking down. And again, just like earlier, um, I'll leave the solution on screen for about 20 seconds or so. All you've got to do is just follow the words. Okay, next one, we're going to go down one to go to Terminal 4. And if you're wondering what Terminal 4 looks like, it's this one, right on the high old edge. And again, same thing as always then. Just uh, follow the words along and you'll be fine, just fine. So next up, we're going to go scroll across to the left once in order to go to Terminal 3. And then you'll be doing the same thing once again. So that'll be number five now out of ten. Um, we've rebuilt half of the links. And for the final one of doing it this particular way, there's also four purple doors which we have to rebuild the links with as well. We're going to go to door number one or terminal number one. And again, do the same Tingos.
Right, mate, so let's blast out a couple of these miscellaneous ones. First of all, head to the left, head up the steps, and we are going to already get the open door achievement for seeing the great door of the Abbey open. So that's Q. So head back down these stairs to the right where we just found the terminal, and go back on to said terminal. Uh, this time we are going to go to terminal two. So just nip across to the right just once. And we're going to be getting the Feels Like Springtime achievement. So out we go. Head up to the uh, right. Or head to the right, sorry. Once we get up, we will then uh, continue straight on. And finally, we'll get the Feels Like Springtime achievement. So there's that one again. You can only get these achievements once you have... Um, rebuild the links in the terminals and the towers so first of all and then come up here sorry and then speak to this guy free at last that's for meeting a surf in the abbey and then we can actually go to the right and we're gonna head to the left and get the first purple door so there's four of these purple doors in order to smash out the rest of the links and you'll know when you're getting closer to the door, as you can tell by the uh, flashing. And it's the same sort of thing every time, except each time there's a couple more stealth sections with a couple more robots, etc. I'll show you what I mean now. So for this one then, again, and this is the only way we can get it going, so we need to find Preacher. So it's Preacher. And then C, or Look. Potion, which is just to the right of it. And Potion again. So Preacher, C, Potion, Potion. Now, there's no robots in this area, first of all, which is good. So we can just go head straight to the left. And then interact with the uh, the button next to the Transformer, bro. Um, but again, with the second, third, and fourth one, there's going to be two, three, uh, one, two, and then three robots. So not too difficult, but, you know, just giving you a cheeky little... Heads and up and housing trousing. Right, so head out of here now. We are now going to go basically to the second level after we get through all this scene. Okay, so that's the first one of the four purple doors done. So heading out. We're going to have to go and find the terminal again, so just follow the path I do. And when we get here then, get into the terminal, we're going to go to the third terminal this time. So the left one and the second row right there. And then all we're going to do, again, just follow the same path again that I do until we grab the A Great Audience achievement. So this one is going to take a few minutes. It's a bit of a while. In fact, we're actually going to get the second door out of the way first. So we head left, we're going to head down these steps, head to the right. And this is where the second of the purple doors are going to be. Alright then, so this time we are going to choose the specific one, so Plural first, which is in the top left corner there, then Warrior, then Carry, slash Possess, and then it's going to be Boat, which is, oh, Vessel, sorry, it's going to be Vessel, so right at the bottom there. So Plural, Warrior, Carry, Vessel, head through, and again, this is where we've got the first bit of Robot, now, unfortunately, we can't go around it. So it's literally just a case of once the robot nips off to the left, then we're going to get through this. So nip it through here. 
As soon as the robot goes to the right, as soon as he passes you, quickly go around the corner. And then as soon as he passes you on the left, quickly go into the next corner. So now. And he shouldn't be able to catch you. And then you can press B to cancel and then nip through to the doorway and hit the button again. Okay, so now we're going to go and get that achievement, a great audience. So this time, follow the same path that I do, again. It's actually going to be coming up here, so as soon as we get up to the top of these steps, uh, the achievement should unlock. I don't know if you actually have to interact with it. Uh, worth interacting with it just in case. Um, in fact, yeah, you will probably have to do that. So the great audience achievement unlocks. So now we're going to head all the way back to the terminal. And this time we're going to go to Terminal 6. So if we go up once and then right once, that is the next terminal that we're going into. Because of course this is where the purple linked door is. Okay, so for the next key code then, what we're going to do, we are going to go and find, uh, where is it, theatre, so theatre first, and then bard, so theatre, bard, plural, and then finally go, so theatre, bard, plural, go, 
Once the door opens, we've got two robots that we need to try and get through this time. This one's actually easier than the last one, so as soon as the one robot over the left side starts going to the left, you can literally just quickly run over, nip behind, and you should have enough time there to get it through to the other side. And old Craptimus Prime is going to be extra fuming here. the terminal we're gonna go to terminal nine this time and we're gonna get another achievement straight away so what we're gonna do then is go uh, right into the alchemist's car and that's gonna get you the alchemist express achievement in fact we're going to be getting all uh, there's another two miscellaneous achievements tied to uh, rebuilding these links so we're gonna go ahead uh, so once we drop down we are gonna go back up the lift And this time we're going to head to the library, or the library, which I know annoys a lot of people when you see it like library. So head to the right and up the steps, and up the left set of steps into the old library, and you'll get the achievement, uh, A Link to the Past. So as soon as you enter the top of the library, sorry, I, even I'm starting to annoy myself with that, the library, uh, you'll get the Link to the Past achievement so we can go back down the way we came. If I can actually get outside, head down, and this time we're going to go to the left and down the steps. So we're going to actually go and see the captured monsters in the laboratory. So then made here be the lab, we're going to go up rather than right, and once we enter we will then get the for its own good achievement. So now you should only have two achievements left, that's for rebuilding all the links in the game, of which we only have to do one more, and then play through the true ending, which only takes about uh, 10 minutes or so. So let us go and get that purple door, so obviously follow the same path that I do once again as we go up in the left. Err. Okay then, for the final one, uh, what we're going to do, we are going to go and find uh, uh, six. Yeah, six, that's what I'm after. Uh, so the, basically the bottom one on the penultimate row. And then book. So six. Then book, which kind of looks more like unknown from Pokemon. And then plural. So six, book, plural. And again, there's going to be three robots we're going to have to try and dart and dish around this time. So maybe a little bit more complicated, but it's actually not so bad. So what we're going to do then, 
we will wait until the robot that's coming towards us now starts nipping off to the left. And then as soon as the top robot starts going down, we will make a break for it and head to the left-hand side. Now, quickly... Ah, see? So I did get caught there somehow. But you'll start in that same position anyway. So what we need to do, when the robot on the left is starting to go up, we'll follow that robot up and around to the shade. We should have just enough time to do that. And then once they both bagger off, you can head to the left. And you're dry and safety. And apparently Megadong is actually disgustingly fuming right now. Sorry, Megatron Dong. So, what seems to, uh, <laughs> probably has seemed to take forever and an age, we finally have rebuilt all the links in the game. So, what we're going to do, we're going to head to the terminal, we're going to head to the terminal 10, and we're effectively now going to go all the way up to the tower to finish the game, but then we've got to play through the true ending, which is literally just snippets of each level. Yeah, so as I said, for this part then, there's not going to be any commentary because we're pretty much used to the game. We don't have to find any glyphs. All we're doing is literally just running from point A to point B. Um, there is going to be a monster chase, uh, but again, it's not too difficult, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. But yes, so I'm not sure... <laughs> to be honest, I'm not totally sure why there is this uh, true ending that's going to take 10 minutes, uh, but... You know, it is what it is, and we've done a lot worse for achievements and stuff, haven't we? We all know.
Oh yeah, we've still got to do a couple of these uh, key codes, except this time it's pretty tricky to see, but I'll tell you what they are anyways. First one's plural. The next one is uh, going to be carry. Yeah, come yeah, on. Sorry, it's a bit tricky. No, sorry, it's impure. So impure. So plural and the one underneath it, which is impure. And then it's going to be, where the hell is it? Make slash create over on the right hand side and then music at the very bottom right corner So, and again, we're going to interact with the terminal this time. We have to get another key code going. So, what we're going to do then, first of all, is find. Oh, there we go. Uh, we're going to find where we brother. So, there is brother. So, uh, click that one. And then we're going to click on this one. Agora. Oh, no, we're not, actually. It's not Agora. Sorry, just checking. Now, this part was a bit tricky, to be honest, because it's hard to kind of see the symbols. Um, yep, 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 yep. Okay, idiot. There we go. So, brother idiot, which is in the second row there, third from bottom. And then, bard, second from top, in the left row. And what is it next? And then, find. So, at the bottom of the third row, find. So again, apologies about that. It's a bit, a bit. Uh, I did have them written down, but I haven't written them down very well. My uh, writing sucks. Uh, donkey ants. Right. 
Right, so for the next one then, it's a bit easier, but we are going to go over to the right. Uh, at the top of the fourth row is Alchemist. So choose Alchemist, and then Plural. So second from top in the left row. And then we're going to go and find uh, Make. Um, yep, so we're going to go and find Make, which is the uh, second from bottom in the fourth row. And then Formula, which is in the fifth row, second from bottom as well. So Alchemist, plural, make formula. All right, Plankton, chill out, blood. So this is where the monster chase actually starts. Now, it's not so bad. It's literally just more or less a linear path. Just, you know, try not to get stuck on anything if you can. And finally then, this is going to be it. So once we get to the top, we'll interact with the uh, center console, uh, center panel, whatever you want to call it. And that's effectively going to be the end of the game. So there's going to be a whole bunch of people here. We're having a little party. We're having a sing song. We're all good. Uh, but that will be that. So once the achievement in this together unlocks, that should put you on to uh, 25... Yeah, 25 out of 25 achievements, so uh, yeah, there we go. So that was the excellent and very enjoyable and graphically stunning chance of Ayrton Senna, who ironically was uh, 30 years ago to the day yesterday of uh, Ayrton Senna's death, so uh, that's mad. But anyway, uh, that will be that, so thank you so much for watching, guys and gals. I hope you enjoyed the game and the guide helped as well. If you did, of course, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share with a friend, as always. And a big shout-out to all my Patreon supporters and YouTube members, and everyone who uh, sends me DMs and everything, and just, yeah, so thank you so much. But I'll see you in the next Game Pass game, guys and gals. Big love!